When putting together a film, you should consider your ability to control the position, size, and orientation of every clip or image in your sequence. Once you have a clip in your timeline, click on your View Modes button in the Canvas window. Set the mode to Image and Wireframe. You should notice a box framing your picture. Move your Canvas playhead to the clip you would like to affect, and then select the clip in your timeline. Now we can begin making moves. We often need to shrink or grow our clips to make sure we are getting the important information on the screen. To control the scale, grab the corner of the wireframe and drag in to shrink and out to grow. You will find a need to reposition your clip as well. To control the position, grab the image and drag it around the canvas window. The last type of movement is the least common, but you may find a need to use it. To rotate your clip, move your mouse over one of the wireframe's edges until you see a curved arrow appear. Then click and drag your mouse left and right to start spinning. Final Cut allows you to make movements on still images or video by recording a start point and an end point. These points are called keyframes. In order to better familiarize ourselves with the keyframe process, let's work through an example. Here we have a still image of the Earth. Select the Image and Wireframe option from the Canvas's View Modes menu. Then move the Canvas playhead to where we would like our movement to start and push the Add Motion keyframe button. Notice that the wireframe turns green. Final Cut now knows that this is where we would like our movement to begin. With our keyframe in place, let's place the image in our desired starting position. Now, we can move the canvas playhead to where we would like our movement to end and click the Add Motion keyframe button before making our changes. The wireframe once again turns green. Reposition your clip to how you would like to see the movement end. In this example, let's increase the image's scale and adjust its position. Notice the dotted line. This line signifies a path between the first keyframe and the second. The duration between the two keyframes will determine the speed of the image's movement across the screen. Now let's watch the clip. You can make any adjustments by finding the moment when the wireframe is green. For two different visual representations of your keyframing, you can either click on the Motion tab of your viewer, or in the lower left-hand corner of the timeline, you can click on the Toggle Clip Keyframes button. As you become more familiar with the program, you will find that these views can be useful for refining your movement. In this example, we have looked at using keyframes to aff affect scale and position, but keyframes can also be used for other attributes such as opacity, rotation, and audio levels. At this point, scale and position are probably the most useful to you, but feel free to experiment with the other options as you start to feel more comfortable with the keyframing process.